Welcome to GED Mastery. Let's do some more practice with independent and dependent variables. So what is an independent variable? An independent variable is what you change in an experiment. And the dependent variable is the effect of that change. But you can also think of it as what you measure in the experiment. So we'll see this with some of our examples. But first, let's just review how to identify the independent and dependent variable in a graph. If you put your hand up along the graph with your finger sticking up and your thumb pointing to the right, your thumb is independent from your other fingers. So that horizontal axis is the independent variable and the vertical axis is the dependent variable. Let's look at an example. Cover crops were tested to see if they reduce erosion. A farmer used cover crops on one field and no cover crops on the other, and then measured soil erosion the next spring. What are the independent and dependent variables of the experiment? Remember, the independent variable is the thing that you're changing. So let's identify what the farmer is changing first. So he used cover crops on one field and no cover crops on the other. And he's also testing to see if those cover crops reduce erosion. So we're assuming that using the cover crops is new and his standard method of farming uses no cover crops. So cover crops will be the change. Now our second step is to identify the effect, which will be the dependent variable. So we know that the change is cover crops. And what does he think will be the effect of that change? Well, he thinks they might reduce erosion. And he also measured soil erosion too. So the effect of that change will be the amount of erosion. And he thinks there will be less erosion. Okay, let's do a practice question. Hydrogen peroxide breaks down to water and oxygen under certain conditions. A scientist wants to determine the effect of light on the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. He puts one container of hydrogen peroxide in sunlight and keeps another container of hydrogen peroxide in the dark. He measures the oxygen levels in each container after 12 hours. What is the dependent variable? So first, let's identify what he's changing. He has one container in sunlight and the other in the dark. So that's going to be the independent variable is the amount of light. So we know it's not A. That's the independent variable. Well, what's the effect of that? He's thinking that maybe light has an effect on the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide and since hydrogen peroxide breaks down to water and oxygen, if the light does indeed break down the hydrogen peroxide, there would probably be more oxygen in the container exposed to sunlight. He's also measuring the oxygen levels. And remember that you can identify the dependent variable by what is measured. So our answer for this question would be B. A student hypothesized that the deeper you dig, the hotter it will be. He accompanied his dad's drilling team on a job and took temperature measurements at various depths in the ground. He compiled his data and concluded that his hypothesis was correct. What is the independent variable? So the independent variable is what you're changing. So he thinks that the deeper you dig, the hotter it will be. So what he's changing is going to be the depth, and the effect of that change will be a different temperature. The depths, the various depths in the ground is what he's changing, and the effect, what he's measuring, is the temperature. So our independent variable, what he's changing, is the depth, and the temperature will change according to the different depths. Tire tread depth is related to breaking time. Tires with treads of 10 30 seconds, 7 30 seconds, and 5 30 seconds of an inch were tested in the rain, and the distance it took to come to a complete stop from 50 miles per hour was measured. 
What is the dependent variable? Okay, first let's identify the independent variable. What are you changing in this experiment? Well, we're changing the depth of the tire tread. There's three different tire treads. And what is the effect of that change? Well, we're thinking it will be the distance to come to a complete stop. And that's also what's being measured. And remember that you can identify the dependent variable as what is being measured. So what are we measuring in this test? The distance. Temperature affects solubility, or the ability of a substance to dissolve into solution. The graph shows the solubility of certain substances. What is the independent variable? Okay, so we have a graph which means we can do the hand trick. We can put our hand up along the graph with our fingers pointing upward and our thumb pointing out to the right. And remember, the thumb is independent from the rest of the fingers. So the horizontal axis there, the one that the thumb aligns with, will be the independent variable, and that is temperature. So temperature is the independent variable. And the dependent variable is the vertical axis here, so the dependent variable would be C. A student wanted to determine if stain remover really helped remove grass stains. He took identical pairs of pants and rubbed them into the grass with the same amount of pressure. He washed one pair of the grass stained pants in regular detergent. He applied stain remover to the other pair of grass stained pants before washing them with detergent. Then he compared the two to see which one looked cleaner. What are the independent and dependent variables in the investigation? Okay, so what is he changing? He's changing the way he's washing them. One has stain remover and one doesn't. So we can say stain remover is the independent variable which rules out B or A. The dependent variable depends on the independent variable. It's the effect of the independent variable and it's the thing that's being measured. So what is he measuring? How clean the pants are. So it is C. I hope this helped you get a better understanding of an independent versus dependent variable. Let me know how you feel about it in the comments. You've got this.